Hi guys, it's Barnaby for Spurred On, bringing you five things I feel we learnt from the Germany vs England game from wonderful, beautiful Berlin. I've been here with the Football Republic. If you don't subscribe to them on YouTube, make sure you do, because we have been documenting our journey with the away fans in Berlin for that incredible match last night. But here is your regular episode of five things that I felt we learned, and it's all about the Spurs players who played for England last night. First up, Danny Rose, who started at left back for his first game for England. And to be honest, I think he put in a sterling performance. He was up and down all game, exactly what he does for Spurs. He never fails, he's always pressing, he's always working hard. And England seemed to have adopted that Spurs-esque high press with the fullbacks being pushed on. Often when our goalkeepers got the ball, the fullbacks already at the halfway line. And Danny Rose was doing that really well. He worked hard, he put in a couple of amazing tackles. And what can we say about Danny Rose? Roy Hodgson said before, uh, the game started in a press conference uh, that he thought Danny Rose had been in, out, in and out of the Tottenham side last year and at the beginning of this season hadn't been that consistent. I'm not sure I totally agree. I think over the last season and a half Danny Rose has become incredibly consistent and definitely when Ben Davis arrived at Spurs that enabled Danny Rose to push on even further as a player and boost his confidence and he's now definitely the first choice left back for Spurs and I think he is possibly just in the lead in terms of who will start a left back for England. It'll be him or Ryan Bertrand. It looks very much like Leighton Baines is out of the picture now. He's been injured a lot. Everton have had a bad season defensively. And last night against Germany, against the world champions, I genuinely feel that Danny Rose put in a great performance. Never tired, 100% the whole time. Linked up well on the outside with his teammates. And defensively, when it comes to getting narrow and helping out your centre backs, he did that job well as well. And in, let's face it, a not great defensive side for England in terms of centre-backs where they're really missing a ball player. I thought Chris Smalling looked poor on the ball yesterday, lacking in confidence. And Gary Cahill kind of gives you what Gary Cahill does. He's never going to be a, a kind of 9 or 10 out of 10 player, but he's stable. But when it came to the goals we conceded, I thought he was at fault. But not Danny Rose. thought he was excellent. Give him at least a 7 or an 8 out of 10 yesterday for yesterday's game. And actually I saw uh, uh, in the uh, England Twitter a choice of uh, who was man of the match, uh, giving it, putting out a poll that it was between the four English, uh, Spurs English players. So Danny Rose really did well, also read The Guardian and the BBC reports, and they both thought he had a very promising debut. So well done, Danny Rose. He's the first person I wanted to talk about in my five things I felt we learned. The second thing that I felt, think we learned, I'm going to talk about Eric Dyer, the defensive midfielder, the destroyer, the player who this season has enabled Spurs to have the best defence in the league. And you know why that is? Because he's not just about playing in front of the back four and being disciplined. Because, let's face it, that's easy. He's also got a tactical brain on him that allows him to drop back into the back four when the, the opposition on the counter-attack. He was doing that pretty well last night. He was good on the ball. He was solid. And we can't forget, he came up with the winner. He spoke in his, in his post-match interview about how uh, he went up to Jordan Henderson, who had been putting in poor corners all night, really far too deep. He said just before the corner came in in the 90th minute, he went up to Jordan Henderson and said, can you put one at the near post, please, and I'll be there. And Henderson, for once, did manage to do that, and it was a towering leap, a towering header. To do that in a big match like that in the 90th minute and make sure you get up early and hang there, incredibly impressive. Although England didn't defend particularly well overall, uh, he was stable and strong and solid in front of the back four. And I think it's going to be tough for Danny Drinkwater to get in there. If Roy Hodgson is only going to play one defensive midfielder, it'll be hard to oust Derek Dyer, I think. He's going to be better on the ball. Danny Drinkwater, when he plays for Leicester, isn't used to having to uh, pass it short, which will have to happen in international football. It's about keeping possession. Danny Drinkwater has already admitted in an interview I saw that when he plays international football, he'll have to change his game because he'll have to start playing it short, whereas it's all about trying to get the ball long into the channels when he plays for Leicester. However, I do think there's a way they could both play together. As I've already alluded to, England do look a bit short defensively. He could play Dyer and drink water in front of the back four to keep it a bit more stable there. That would allow the fullbacks to push on more without worrying too, uh, as much. And then he could really play an attacking three behind Harry Kane. He could play uh, both Barkley, Ali and Rooney potentially, or and Sterling. I think the way it looks now after last night, you've got to play Ali, he was fantastic as I'll get on to, but also Ross Barkley is a game changer as well and I think Roy Hodgson has to find a way to get both of those players in the team. For those of you guys who like Raheem Sterling as a player, he could play with them too. For me, since he's joined Manchester City, he's dropped He's dropped in his uh, consistency. He doesn't believe in himself quite as much. I think that's because he's not the main man at Man City like he was at Liverpool. And whether he'll get that form back 
for the Euros is doubtful. He's injured as it is. He might not make it due to injury. He's certainly not going to get a lot of game time. Anyway, to go back to Eric Dyer, I thought it was an 8 or 9 out of 10 performance. Probably a 9 now that he got that winning goal. And let's face it, he saved his mate's bacon as well because Deli Ali had just missed an absolute sitter, unfortunately. It bowled a little bit. I've seen it on the highlights, so I'm going to give him that. But Eric Dyer is best mate. They absolutely love each other all over Twitter, all over the Spurs official site. He got his mate out of jail, and the way they celebrated afterwards was just fantastic. So Eric Dyer, my second player I wanted to talk about in the five things I felt we learned. The third player, obviously... Delhi Alley, the jewel in the crown I think, not just of last night but of Tottenham Hotspur of England at the moment. He does things on the pitch that are just pure confidence and belief. Paul Gascoigne was similar when he first came into the England side. He was young, so talented but the key was he wasn't afraid to do things on the pitch. Over the years we've seen enough talented players who could be world class players for England internationally but they're so scared of the reaction of the press, of the fans, of the whole nation that it comes to, when it comes to playing in the big games, they just play it sideways or backwards because they don't want to be the ones losing the ball. Delhi Alley yesterday, huge game. Berlin National Stadium against the world champions. He got his nutmeg in. He was lofting the ball over players. He was playing dangerous through passes. He was trying to make things happen constantly. Had a couple of shots off in the first half. Made Neuer make a great save in the second half. And he was just consistently the best player on the park. It was really unfortunate for him that that ball bobbled a bit for that ball that was cut back to him that would have been the winner but he'll learn from that as well in a way I felt he had a little bit too much time you know if it was more instinctive the ball came to him a bit quicker I think he probably would have scored it but in the end it bobbled at the end and it just went over the bar and you felt for him because he kind of collapsed on the floor but to me that took nothing out of his performance 10 out of 10 he got man of the match in all the papers everybody raving about him an absolute natural an athlete can get up and down I want to talk a little bit about where he plays though because people are saying Maybe you could play Dyer and Ali together in central midfield to allow Rooney to come in behind the front, uh, the front man. For me, I don't think you should do that. I think Deli Ali was given the number 10 shirt last night. I think he is best in the number 10. Maybe in the end, in a few, over the years, as he gets more built, more stocky, like Gareth Bale did over the years when he joined Spurs, because he came in, he was like a rake. Deli Ali is still thin, but in the end, maybe he will become that central midfielder like where Dembele is for Spurs alongside Dyer now. But at the moment, his best position is behind the front man or hanging off the left in the three behind the front man so he can make those runs in behind like he has done for Alderweireld to find him on a couple of occasions for goals this season for Spurs. He's so dangerous in the last third. He's got to play there for England, I think, and continue playing there for Spurs. Pochettino picked it up pretty early. He knows that. And I think Roy Hodgson has got to see that too. If we're brave enough to play Deli Alley there, uh, and Ross Barkley and potentially Rooney or Sterling we are going to scare teams in the Euros absolutely no doubt if Roy Hodgson has the bravery to play the most creative players and to give them a platform on which to play I think we can put teams in danger and it's not just about you know what uh, your team does it's about having the team to scare the opposition into playing a different way and if you have those players all on the pitch I think teams such as Russia and Wales in the group they will sit more defensively and be more scared and that will give us more chance to uh, to hold the key to the matches keep possession and make the chances Deli Ali, like I said earlier jewel in the crown five million pounds we bought him for he's only playing in his first season for Spurs well done everyone at Spurs well done Levy well done Paul Mitchell well done Daniel Levy They've really done it the right way. Let's just hope and pray he stays fit for the rest of the season and he makes that happen in the Euros because if he plays with this confidence and this level, England could potentially do well. So my number three of the five things that we wanted to talk, I wanted to talk about about the England game last night, Delhi Alley, fantastic performance, man of the match. Second thing I think we learned, you know, I'm mixing this format up, let's face it. It's the five things we learned, but I'm just talking about the four Spurs players and then I'm going to have a final point. But the, uh, the fourth thing that I felt we learned, or the second thing, can't remember which way I've done it, Harry Kane. Number nine for England, leading the line. As I've said a few times, regular viewers will know it, the closest thing we've had to Alan Shearer since Alan Shearer, and that's why Alan Shearer raves about Harry Kane. An unbelievable player. The absolute archetypal player who can play the one-man up front role. Absolutely fantastic hold-up play. Works his socks off, runs the channels, can hang on the last man, but can also come deep and play a Teddy Sheringham-esque role. His final ball is fantastic. And his goal, just when we had gone 2-0 down, the chips were down, it felt like everything was against us despite the fact we played well. A corner comes over, it's kind of headed out quite weakly, it looks like a German player is going to get on it to clear it long. Harry Kane muscles in, gets his body in the way, absolutely fantastically. He's got Ozil and Müller around him, two of the best players in the world. 
not to be intimidated. Cruyff turns them, gets another little touch, and then he's in Harry Kane territory there, isn't it? Have you ever seen a player who is as deadly from that right-hand position to shoot the ball across the keeper into the bottom right-hand corner? I never have. That's Manuel Neuer there, the best keeper in the world, and he didn't have a chance. It was the only place Harry Kane could have put it where he couldn't have saved it, and it was a fantastic finish. I watched the ITV highlights this morning. Lothar, Lothar Matthias, the ex-German captain, was in the studio with Ian Wright and Lee Dixon, and Matthias was raving about this goal. He talked about it over and over again. Just a fantastic finish. He really likes the way Harry Kane plays. And, you know, what an unbelievable player he is. He just You just know he's the player who's last out on the training ground. You know he's so good at that finish because he just does it day after day after day. Gets himself in those positions in training and just finishes. He's deadly from that situation. He was deadly last night and he brought players into the game all day. I say day, it was a night game obviously, but he's just a fantastic number nine. There's no argument for me anymore that Rooney can play up front on his own instead of Kane. I think there would be absolute riots in the country if that was happening because Rooney, not only has he not had a good season particularly, he hasn't for a while, he's lost his pace. He's not the kind of player who can play in that high press if you ask me. He's not a worker bee, you know, that's the way I'd describe it. He's not someone who's going to put it in like that, whereas Harry Kane will. So if Rooney's going to play in this England team, it's got to be a bit deeper, if anything, because Harry Kane, I think, has got that position all down for himself. People will say, well, why can't Jamie Vardy play there? Potentially he can. He's a different player. He can, he'll always be on the last shoulder and get him behind. But Kane gives you an option of both doing that and coming deep that will make it difficult for defenders to know what to do, how to mark him, how to play him. He wins free kicks because he's so strong around the, uh, around the box and in the last third that people just end up kicking him. And he's just a fantastic, fantastic player. A joy to have at Spurs. A top scorer in the Premier League. Looks like he may well end up getting the golden boot. I think he'll play. He'll cross 30, 30 goals for the season, all competitions for the second year in a row. It beggars belief uh, what an improvement there's been from Harry Kane in the last two seasons. Absolute honour to have him at Spurs, and I think England fans are starting to embrace him just as Spurs fans have. I think that's his fourth goal in nine appearances for England, maybe his fifth. And like I said, I think he's got to start up front for England at the Euros. The last thing I want to talk about in terms of the five things I felt we learned from yesterday is just overall about England. Now, obviously, I'm a Spurs fan, so I've talked, and this is spurred on, the Spurs channel, so we've talked about the four Spurs players. But last night was the best game that England have played in terms of their mindset, in terms of their attitude, in terms of the high press, not being afraid of the opposition, since potentially since 2001 when we beat, England, uh, beat Germany 5-1 in Munich in that magic night where Michael Owen scored a hat-trick. Before that, I haven't seen us play with that kind of forward thinking since Euro 96 under Terry Venables. There have just been too many years where England have been a little bit drab, frankly, and played it simple. Um, Euro 2004 was good as well when Rooney was on fire, but it feels a bit like that now. Players like Deli Alley and Harry Kane, who are starting to get the country behind them, starting to get the country believing that they are a new attitude and a new type of England player, it strikes me there's more of a teamwork about it, kind of taking over from that Spurs team the way it's, it's more than just a sum of its parts. Uh, same with Leicester. You've got Jamie Vardy, who's a terrific impact substitute at worst. If Roy Hodgson is brave and plays his best players and his most confident players, he could play a 4-4-2. Yesterday in the last half an hour, we were up 4-4-2 and Germany weren't getting on the ball. Now, what Roy will be worried about is will opposition teams in international games in the Euros outplay us through the middle by having three men in the park if we were to play a 4-4-2. But just like Leicester have done this season with Vardy and, uh, and their other striker, Osaki, uh, uh, playing up front, the Japanese player, it makes the opposition defend in a different way if you've got two strikers up there. And so if you can make, you know, play like that and you're on the front foot the whole time, then maybe that's possible. And it, Frankly, England are not blessed at centre-back at the moment and we look a bit weak defensively, so maybe the best way will be to try and outscore teams. It'll be interesting on Tuesday night when we've got the Netherlands at home. I think John Stones will play in that game. Last night I thought we didn't have a, a very good ball-playing centre-back and we needed one. So if John Stones can step up and maybe play well on Tuesday night and get him his way into the Euros, that might help us a bit because Chris Smalling didn't look very confident, especially on the ball. And Gary Cahill, I think, you know, he'll always just play a sideways pass pretty much. We need someone who's going to be brave and play it into the midfield and play those kind of link balls and possibly even play a ball over the top for Ali to run onto, as Alderweireld does for Spurs. Hopefully John Stones can be that man. But like I said, very promising for England last night. Incredibly good for the Spurs players as well. Can only help our confidence. Who knows? Obviously, we've got to get out of the group. Roy Hodgson hasn't got out of the group in the last World Cup. Got to get out of the group. It's not going to be easy. Russia and Wales are in there, going to be battling for it. 
But if we can get out of them and then get into the next round, maybe, maybe just maybe England could make it to a semi-final or something and really make the fans believe in the national team again because it's been a long time. Anyway, guys, let me know what you thought of that. Uh, five things I thought we learned. Make sure you go onto the Football Republic on YouTube to check out our whole story of the weekend of uh, our bucket list. Is what it's all about the bucket list. One of the things we wanted to cross off was going to follow England at an away game, like a big Germany game in the German capital. It's a really great video. Make sure you check it out. The Football Rep on YouTube is where to find it. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to Spurred On on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at Spurred On TV. Come on, you England, and come on, you Spurs. Match preview battle is Germany versus England. Germany versus England. Obviously, it's international break this week, so we've gone all international. They've got to pick the England team. They've got to uh, tell us what the score will be 